As a boot collector and probably serious manly fashionista, what would you wear for jewelry duty? I've got together with some YouTube friends uh, from Boots Jeans and the Odd Watch, Rocky Mountain Style and Stray Reviews to take on this challenge together. What would you wear for jury duty? What will I come up with? How you going? Welcome back to Brutlosophy. Uh, but if you're new to my channel, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands and waters that I live and work on, the Wajuk people of the Noongar Nation. Now in this video, I'm accepting a challenge with Jordan from the channel uh, Boots, Jeans and the Odd Watch, Lee from Stray Reviews and Patrick from Rocky Mountain Style, we're all going to take on the challenge of what we would wear for jury duty. After you finish this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe though, go check out their channels and see how they've met this challenge. So to start, I'm going to take a look at what uh, you're advised to wear to go to court, what I'll wear, and then of course, being a boot channel, I'm going to take a look at what boots I'm going to wear uh, to pair them with uh, my chosen outfits. In Western Australia, government information about court etiquette says that the dress code is tidy and conservative. Not very helpful, but they do give examples of what not to wear, being sleeveless tops, pants or skirts above the knee, so no mini skirts for us boys. No open toe shoes such as thongs or sandals, and no hats or caps. Examples of what uh, would be generally acceptable are subtle coloured clothing such as dark colours and white, a suit, even though they uh, actually note that an actual suit is not essential. They also say a collared button-up shirt and noting that uh, you should make sure to button up to an appropriate point. So, button to your belly button to show off your hairy chest and big gold medallion. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, and they include clean closed-in shoes. Yeah, boots, here we come. Now, I actually have been to court many times, uh, but as an expert witness, not a juror. I've always made sure to wear a suit and tie because when you're uh, uh, testifying to facts and figures, you want to be seen to be professional and credible. Uh, an accountant testifying that a scam has taken place may not be credible in jeans and a big logo t-shirt. I also know for a fact that certain courts and judges will actually throw people out of court if they're dressed inappropriately uh, and even fine them for being disrespectful to the solemn procedures. So, in terms of outfits, I'm going to take it really conservatively at the beginning and actually wear a suit. Uh, but I might show you that I'm a rebel and I might even leave off the tie, <laughs> just for fun. I'm going to assume that it's a reasonably long trial, maybe a couple of weeks. So after a few days, and I see that the judge maybe isn't a stiff-necked, no-humor conservative, I would gradually casual up, and I'd probably start wearing smart business casual, uh, change to an Oxford cloth button-down in a more daring all-black, say, uh, dark chinos and a dark sports jacket. And then in the last few days, when I'm pretty sure that nobody wants a mistrial by kicking out a juror, I might loosen up even more, add some colour, wear a vest instead of a coat, and I might put, say, a colour on feet. On the last day, I might relax right up, wear denim, but dark and undistressed though, and I'd maybe, uh, for the air conditioning, it's actually quite cool in our Western Australian courts, maybe I'd throw on a warm jacket like a flint and tinder wax trucker jacket, making sure it hasn't patina too badly. Hey, it still fits the court etiquette to-do list, right? As for the important bit, what will be on my feet? Well, obviously, as I check out the lay of the land as far as the judge is concerned, I'd choose boots that fit it with my style of dress through the fortnight. My first boot to be worn with a suit, whether those suits be uh, black or navy or grey, would have to be my go-to Aussie boardroom boots, my RM Williams Craftsman boots in black calf. Take a look at my original review up there. 
And I will leave links to where you can get these boots down below as well in the uh, description area. As you can see, it's a Chelsea boot. But here in Australia, Chelsea boots, particularly those in a smooth full grain leather in dark colors, and especially RM Williams's, are considered dress boots. Uh, and they're worn in boardrooms and professional offices, even by judges and lawyers in court. In this black calf and under your suit trousers, you wouldn't be able to tell what kind of boots they are, when in fact all you see is the dressy black leather uh, in a last that accentuates dressiness because of that uh, tapered uh, chisel toe and the uh, low profile toe box. The last is actually dressy anyway, despite its paddock riding boot origins because uh, it's slim over your instep. The 270 degree Goodyear welt is very finely stitched uh, so much so that there is hardly a welt ledge uh, that shows and you could easily mistake it for a Blake stitched boot. The 270 degree welt also means that the back of the boot is sleek and has a dressy line without that ledge at the back. This particular model, the Craftsman, comes out uh, on a leather sole. I've put a rubber toppy on it but the original is a leather, mid uh, leather sole. Uh, the midsole is leather uh, and the outsole is also quite thin so that overall it actually looks like a dress shoe. They are especially comfortable for a long day in court because if fitted well, they hug your feet, giving you snugness and a slim line up the ankles. The goring panels are good quality, designed nicely, and it takes a lot to get them uh, to go flabby. Conditioned well, and in this black calf, polished well, they look good under a suit. And if you want, this leather will take a mirror polish as well. As I casual up and start wearing business quite casual, you know, I'm going to choose the Grantstone diesel boot in the Badalassi saddle tan, the, the Italian tannery Badalassi Carlo. Now, sure, they are pretty orange and dusty, um, but in this Leo last, it's very forgiving and it's a versatile last that suits dressy as well as totally rugged. I find this a very versatile boot. After a while, the saddle tan patinas into a deep gold as it is now, and so it doesn't punch you in the eye with orange when you look down. In fact, I, I think when I look at this now, you know, it's a reasonably conservative boot. It's a reasonably conservative color. It's tan. It's great if you're wanting to inject some color in your outfit conservatively. Now, the Leo Last is comfortable. It is snug in the heel and in the waist, uh, but rounded out enough that despite the almond-shaped toe, it's actually quite anatomical at the toe. So you can sit in these all day and you can pace in the jury room. This particular Grantstone diesel has a leather sole, but unlike the Craftsman, the soles are really thick slabs. This is a stylistically emphasized uh, uh, leather sole by leaving them in a natural leather color so that they, uh, the welt frames the saddle tan uppers and in fact complements them. I like the Grantstone leather soles, but I do find that they're a little bit softer than the RM Williams's, uh, which for their thinness takes a long time to wear down. These are extremely comfortable, but I feel that they wear a bit faster. If you take a look at them, they've worn at the toe. I'm avoiding putting on a toe plate. Uh, and to protect them, I've applied an oil, especially for leather soles, called Color Lock Leather Soles. It's, it's an Australian product. And you can also get a Saphir product anyway, called Soul Guard. Uh, the initially stiff Badalassi veg tanned uppers eventually do soften, so that for me now, they are quite supple, but, but still supportive. The service boot design is simple, so it doesn't shout out to everyone as a loud boot, uh, despite the saddle tan. The shape of the toe and the low profile allows this to be worn as business casual. Now, as I loosen up even more toward the end of the trial, I'm, I'm thinking I want to be free. <laughs> I'd still wear dark colors because that's what the uh, judge will see, right? My, my top half. But down below, I'm really rebelling, man. I'm going to wear green. <laughs> I've chosen Parkhurst's iconic Allen boot in spruce kudu to end the trial. The thing with green boots is that you need to keep the rest of the outfit quiet. Let the green boots tell the story. So this suits the court dress up top, uh, but down at my feet, I can show my individuality. The spruce kudu uppers is kudu leather from Charles F. Stead. It is a full grain leather from a Southern African antelope species called 
guess what? Kudu. <laughs> They're culled annually to keep the herd healthy and under control. And the meat is distributed to villages, so really it is a no-waste product. Now, Sia Stead in Leeds in England tanned the kudu hide by shrinking it slightly in the tannage to produce this tough but incredibly thin and supple leather full of the animal's natural scars and skin folds and, and even veins. As you gradually uh, wear and condition it over the years, this one is about two and a half years old, the imperfections just deepen and tell their own story. As for the Parkhurst Allen pattern, it's a service boot pattern, classic, that's heritage style and therefore quite conservative in design. Parkhurst's 602 last is a combination last that starts narrow in the heel, snug in the waist, and then opens out to a roomy E width in the forefoot. I find this very supportive. Uh, it's very stable and comfortable, so I think perfect for a day in court. It is built on a day-night sole and constructed using a split reverse welt. That's where the welt is uh, partially split and the top of the split is pushed up against the uppers. Um, whereas the rest of the welt that's just there is stitched in as normal. Uh, apart from being an attractive frame, it does help with water resistance. Finally, as I totally loosen up on the last day in my wax trucker jacket, God, I'm such a free spirit at bean counter. <laughs> I choose to put on my cleaned up Red Wing 875 classic mock toe boots. Now, I'll grant you, this is a bit out there for court, but hey, it's the last day and I don't think the judge or the lawyers are gonna throw out a juror and declare a mistrial. Also, it is within the rules of court etiquette as issued by the court in that they don't rule out genes and I'm still being respectful by choosing dark, undistressed denim. And in Australia, these are not work boots. In fact, not many people would have seen mock toes in Australia, and uh, at least mock toes like this with high walls. And if they're polished up, they actually look pretty respectful. On the last day, the jury may have to take a long time to deliberate in the jury room. So I want to be comfortable sitting around and possibly on my feet if we're arguing the merits in front of a whiteboard. These are comfortable. I can't believe I'm saying that because of the break in I had with them, but now they're comfortable. The wedge sole is great for standing around uh, and the oil tanned leathers from SB Foot Tanning, uh, Red Wing's own tannery, uh, they have softened and are quite supple. So they're comfy for sitting around and standing all day. The classic mock toe shape, where the toe box uh, is made up of two pieces, the, the vamp piece and the side walls, uh, sewn together with this moccasin shoe stitch. It, this pairs well with clean, casual, relaxed outfits in jeans, and maybe with a chambray or denim shirt. If you have a pair of 875s that are too beat up, you can still get the same effect with a pair of Grantstone field boots in saddle tan. Same orangey color, same chunky mock toe, uh, toe box, same white wedge sole. Just as comfy underfoot and with all that leather and cork inside, just shapes to your foot the more you wear them with a much more forgiving break-in period. This is in Grant Stone's Floyd Last, which is roomier than their uh, Leo Last at Diesel Boots. So great for those last day, all day long arguments and deliberations in the jury room. So there are my choices for jury duty. Going for a long trial, start by being very conservative and figure out what the judge will let people get away with. If all goes well, start to loosen up, get into smart business casual, uh, and then relax business casual, and then if everything looks good right at the very end, go totally casual, but still clean and neat. Can't go wrong with RMs for uh, the entire journey actually, but hell, <laughs> I'm a boot collector, so I want to change it up. Uh, Grant Stone. Parkhurst, some colour, even red wings, go for it. But don't get thrown out and don't wear these boots with a mini skirt. <laughs> go check out my friends, see how they did in this challenge and then come back to tell me. Before you go, click on the like button because I'm sure you like this video. <laughs> click on subscribe, that is a court ruling. Until the next time, take care and see you soon.